Hey, how's it going down there, folks? Welcome back here to a weekend. It is Saturday out here, 11.53 a.m. California time. December 14, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 3.3 here across the area of uh, just outside of western Turkey area, it looks like. The latest quake on the globe. Let's go ahead and check out California where we had a, a little bit of movement down south here off the San Andreas Fault near the Brawley Seismic Zone. A 3.0 earthquake coming in earlier this morning uh, in that location there. A uh, handful of smaller quakes in the vicinity as well with the latest looks like a 2.8 over here across the Palomar Observatory region. That's on the Elsinore Fault. Been pretty quiet there on the Elsinore Fault here recently but uh May start to see things kick up. Overall, Southern California here in the last week, oh, about 10 days or so, has been relatively quiet in terms of anything above 2.5. Most of the movement has been focused up north here uh, following that seven-pointer movement in Nevada. Handful of earthquakes up there in Northern California as well. So uh, just kind of watching potentially for some movement out here across Southern California. It can't, can't stay quiet forever. Uh, there's a movement out there in the Nevada area. 17 more earthquakes here in the last 24 hours of various magnitudes, including a 3.4. Now that brings up the total tally to uh, just about uh, 328 epicenters of tremor, or of earthquakes, I should say here, near the Yarrington, Nevada area. This is the region that had a 5.8 a few days ago. As uh, far as the 7, look at this earthquake right here on the Cascadia, goodness. Uh, 3.2 early this morning right there on the Cascadia, the plate boundary itself. As uh, far as total tally from that uh, 7.0 earthquake that struck out here a few days back. It's been actually uh, over a week now because uh, yeah, it's definitely been, I believe it's been over a week, right? No, it hasn't. It's been within the last week. Okay. Seems like time is flying by and then some days it's going slow it all depends on if you're feeling under the weather or not like i am today so in the last week here including the seven pointer 427 earthquakes there mostly aftershock sequences there and uh a little bit of migration up here across the southern end northward so be moving northward here into the southern end of the cascadia mega thrust area including that one uh, this morning, so just kind of keeping an eye on things here. I'm a little, uh, little skeptical. I think we'll still see some further activity out here across the West Coast. Not a whole lot of movement here across the general area of this area of the Pacific Plate. That's going to be the western portion of the Pacific Plate, eastern area. Uh, still watching maybe for some larger scale activity out here across the Curl Cam Chat. It's been awfully quiet, uh, but at the same time here, we got some, you know, little standstill in terms of any elevated activity today but we're still seeing regular earthquake movement in various locations out here across northern california and nevada uh, here's these uh, earthquakes earlier uh, actually earlier this morning we did have another earthquake here in the fall river mills area of northern california this follows a little bit of earthquake activity last night a 3.3 and a 2.9 uh, indicative here of stress across the area and of course most of the stress builds up here along the plate boundary where we've been seeing all that earthquake activity uh, this earthquake very close to uh, blacks mountain area there's quite a few uh, volcanic domes out here may not be able to see it on this map but it's there um, it sits north way north here of mount lassa which is down south here uh, and well southeast of the Mount Shasta area. But uh, this earthquake, uh, about 10 miles deep or so for a 2.5. <coughs> Excuse me. As soon as I start feeling better, a new cold comes about. Crazy. A couple ones and twos up there across Oregon. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, Mountain Hood sits to the east here. Uh, the rest of the Cascades pretty quiet up there for now. Uh, let's see what else we got. A little bit of movement off the San Diego area, it looks like. Uh, 2.2 and a 1.7 from today. Aside from that, um, no unusual activity to note of across the southern portion of the state for now. Just a little bit of uptick and a, a, magnitude, a couple magnitudes there above 2.5 this morning. 
uh, across the Idaho area. Sawtooth Vault System getting uh, some shaking going on up here. There's been a handful of earthquakes up here recently, but uh, really nothing major. Just uh, some active faults. Yellowstone National Park, pretty quiet. Let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone overview here from today. Not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity out here. A lot of uh, environmental noise out there in the seismograph stations. This looks like a... Let's see here. That's a little uh, amplitude adjustment, it looks like. that's That did show up here on another station, a little west of them. So, uh, but aside from that, no really no earthquake activity that I can see there across the area of Yellowstone. Uh, Texas oil fields still getting hit, but really, generally, uh, this is fairly minor uh, with most of the movement here from yesterday. Only one earthquake outside of Pecos, Texas here early this morning for a 1.5. The new Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet for now. Out here in the Pacific, got Kilauea volcano starting to stir up out here right around the Kilauea summit area. This is going to be the Lava Lake region, so we better go see what's going on there across that volcano. The volcano itself, as of the update a few days ago, still sits as a yellow and advisory a uh, quick glance here at the webcams to see what we got for any uh, any views out here of the summit area. Looks like a beautiful blue clear sky. A little bit of clouds out there on the big island. Also some volcanic gas here seeping through some of the tiniest of cracks. That is very common. I don't see anything of abnormal activity uh, in terms of any uh, major hot spots building up out here. The east rift zone there across the big island. Uh, no visible signs of any eruption out there. So let's take a look here at the deformation data across the summit area. Looks like we're starting to go up uh, in a big fashion here in the last day or so. This is the inflation chart here. Electronic tilt at the Kilauea summit and east rift zone. So notice the last month here we've seen a little bit of uptick inflation here followed by some leveling out comparable to a couple different uh you know patterns there in the past so this is going to bring us up and up and up with the earthquake activity going on there across the summit area good possibility we're looking at some magma movement underneath the region there uh, we're at a level scene here here's the current level this is in meters the past year all of these down word trends here are previous small inflations there at Kilauea Volcano. Uh, our last one was there across the Middle East Rift Zone back in September. That has since come up in terms of inflation and uh, we're matched or if not above their previous level reached there prior to the eruption. So uh, I think we're going to be looking at something here soon. Uh, earthquake activity obviously will be a key indicator. Uh, nothing going on there across the floor level. Let's see here what we got for seismograph stations. A handful of earthquakes there, as you can see. Quite a few. Actually, there's quite a bit more showing up on the uh, last 12 hours of seismograph stations there than what's actually showing up here. Got about 20 earthquakes here on the uh, USGS map, but it, it looks like there's a little bit more if you were to count uh, every single one of these spikes, those are indeed earthquakes. So uh, I'm not seeing any uh, fluid movement, so to speak, uh, for as magma uh, displacement goes or intrusion. Uh, but we are getting some buildup in the area of the summit area. So we'll continue to watch that. Again, our last eruption back in September was, was this little area back here. Little fissure event. So we'll continue to watch that and report back on anything, but uh, definitely getting some noticeable uptick there across the summit area for the uh, Kilauea volcano today in terms of earthquake activity. All right, so the largest earthquake so far in the last 24 hours is going to be the 6.4. That's down along the Prue-Chile Trench. Pretty close to where that 9.5 struck there back in 1960. Aside from that, uh, today... Latest earthquake, 5.2 down in New Zealand. Pretty shallow earthquake here at the northern end 
of the Hikarangi Subduction Zone. That's another major player producing an 8.0 or above earthquake. That's a pretty shallow earthquake there at the northern end, so we're going to have to watch that. Uh, let me go over to the GeoNet servers here real quick and uh, take a look and see what we got going on here. Goodness. It's just crazy sickness in the air, let me tell you. So GeoNet servers reporting a 5.0. 3.9, a little bit further south here in the last two hours along the southern end of the Hikarangi subduction zone. So things are uh, things are starting to move out here across that area. Of course, the Hikarangi subduction zone is a uh, an area of subduction right here that roughly extends from the North Island eastern coast here all the way down. To just right about here you can see where it ends pretty much right in that canyon area that uh, has produced very large mega quakes in the past and uh, it's been a while like like other subduction zones out here it's been a uh, you know hundreds of years so these guys are potentially looking at something popping there in that area as well uh, with the current movement that we're seeing there in fact, over the last few months, we've seen a handful of earthquakes. Uh, I should say more than a handful. A lot of deep activity underneath the North Island region. Let's go check out the... Uh, and, of course, the deeper activity adding strain to the uh, subduction zone area. There's that five-pointer showing up pretty nicely on the North Island stations there. A handful of smaller quakes out there as well. As noted on the graphs... So we'll continue to keep an eye on it, folks. We're definitely watching and waiting for that eight-pointer that's expected somewhere out here on the globe. We're pretty much into a point here where we should be seeing something of 8.0 magnitude level and above. It's been since 2021, since our last eight-pointer. And on average, we see an eight-pointer once a year, if not once a year, once every other year. So watch for that. could be uh, anywhere out here. Couple earthquakes down across the uh, Macquarie Island area this morning. 4.7, 4.8. That uh, Hikarangi subduction zone earthquake was uh, about 2 in the morning. So uh, looks like it's working its way around the area in terms of plate movement. Keep an eye there on New Zealand. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet aside from one earthquake from yesterday. Oh, that's probably this morning here, 5.3. South Sandwich Trench here. That's actually from yesterday. A little earthquake down there. Uh, aside from that, uh, as you can see here on the globe, typical zones out here getting hit. One more earthquake there in between. Uh, well, it's off on that subduction zone region here. Let me see. Right about here. Off of the Kumano Ridge, this is that uh, subduction zone that, they're, that the uh, Japanese government put out a mega quake warning for uh, a couple months back. No mega quake activity yet, but that could be another area where we could see an 8-pointer. This earthquake, 4.7 from early this morning. Pretty shallow right here off this subduction zone level at about 6 miles deep. Uh, space weather activity out here. See if we've got anything major going on. Got to get through this while I have my voice. Goodness. Uh, a little bit of sea flare activity here. <laughs> I think I better break out the, uh, you know, that voice to text or uh, text to voice. <sighs> that probably wouldn't go over well, I don't think, for an update. But uh, that's always an option. Or I could have Missy Mimi's jump on here. But trying to work through this sea flare a little bit of sea flare activity earlier this morning not looking at anything major going on here in terms of strong flaring but there is a there's a number of sunspots out here folks that uh obviously highly visible here on the visible disc but really nothing of any major activity for now only got a five percent chance for the x flare m flare at 45 percent chance here 99% chance for sea flare. Oh, let's see. No major roars in the forecast there for now, folks. 
A uh, quick glance here at the Space or uh, Storm Prediction Center. Did you hear San Francisco this morning had its first ever issued tornado warning that was associated with this low pressure system here? Uh, goodness, we got a lot of rainfall kicking up here in, in California overnight and this morning. Also triggered that tornado warning. I don't think there was actually an observed tornado. It was basically a hook echo rotation there uh, picked up on radar and uh, of course anything that looks like some type of rotating storm should be issued a tornado warning and that's what the weather service did first ever for San Francisco pretty crazy uh, I picked up here oh I think another two and a half inches of rainfall early this morning they we had a huge massive band of rain come in and create some flooding conditions out here in uh, the Sacramento Valley area. So that's going to linger around today. Uh, it will scoot up north and out of here tomorrow. Uh, for Sunday, it might be some lingering showers, but our next storm system here appears to be coming in Monday night into Tuesday um, next weekend as well. So it does look like a, a series of storm systems is set to... Uh, Transverse here across the California area eastward for the holiday, Christmas holiday uh, week. So uh, might have some travel issues there if uh, there's going to be. There's always lots of folks on the road and flying. Uh, but it looks like we got a series of storm systems out there to impact the West Coast here to finish off the December month. And that is okay with me, let me tell you. Uh, I'll take all the rain we could get. We need it. Rain brings about life, and that's what it's all about. Uh, let's take, check out the uh, total accumulated precipitation model runs here. Southern California not getting in on the mix out here, unfortunately. Uh, a little bit of shower activity, but that's about it. Uh, most of the rainfall staying, oh, about San Francisco, Sacramento, northward here. And look at those rainfall totals here. We're talking about two feet of rainfall accumulation there across the coast. That is crazy. So this is all subject to change, but that's what the weather models are showing. Sacramento Valley area probably pick up another five, six inches of rainfall. Um, so yeah, that's uh, December is one of our wetter months, so that is good news. Keep us on track here uh, in the rain gauge. Wow, man, I'm, I'm literally losing my voice here. I'm going to have to do the whisk. I'm going to be called the Earth Whisper. Or how about the Earthquake Whisper? I'll just do all my updates in a whisper. Yeah, probably not going to go over too good with that. Um, Asteroids. Oh, what do we got for asteroids? Any good sized ones headed this way? There's a couple big ones out there, but they're fairly safe. Over 4 million miles away for that 200-foot uh, airplane size asteroid. That's pretty crazy. I would not want that to hit the planet. All right. That's it, folks. Uh, for now, I will catch you guys back out here a little bit later. There's China Lake. Okay, that's uh, down around the Ridgecrest area. Those are some little bitty spiky earthquakes showing up on the uh, model. And... Uh, Looks like there might be a little bit of swarming going on down there across this area outside the Ridgecrest region. So, you know, even though California, Southern California has been a little bit quiet, it's possible we could start to, uh, start to see a little trend and uptick here today. Uh, so we'll definitely watch that throughout, the, uh, throughout this Saturday. You have yourself a wonderful day, folks, and we'll see you guys back out here later tonight, hopefully, with my voice. Have a good one.